It worked, I think. All right. Technical difficulties ended, I think. So I want to welcome the fabulous, the wonderful Harris Turner and Sean Ryan. Thanks so much for joining me today. Oh my gosh, 14 viewers already. That's amazing. See, they're right there waiting. So we're so happy to have you with us. And sorry, we're a little late. My browser decided to have a problem. So thanks so much for joining us, guys. I think we can just start by if you guys each want to give a quick kind of recap of life after RH, what you've done, where you've been, and we'll go from there. Sean, you go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had two windows open. Um, so there was a severe delay in my audio, and I just missed everything you said. <laughs> oh, no. See, technical issues abound today. Oh, look at Ari. Allison D. Smith, Sean and Harris. Hi from Mrs. Dane Smith. Already oh, there. Hi, Yay. Mrs. Smith. All right. So Sean, what I just uh, give us a brief a brief look at your um after life after our age. What's been going on? What have you done? Where have you been? And we'll Great. hope that this keeps working well. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I graduated in 2012. Um, and then right after high school, I went to University of Buffalo where I studied musical theater. And while I was in college, I um, did a couple shows in Buffalo, um, mostly through my school. Um, but then I graduated in 2016. And then I went on to um, do the National Tour of Fame, the musical. And then after that, I moved to the city officially. Um, and then shortly after being in the city, I uh, got an offer to join the National Tour of Cinderella. And then I did that. And then while I was on Cinderella, I auditioned for the International Tour of Rent. Um, and then I left Cinderella to do that. Um, and then after that, I went to China. I went back to China to choreograph the National Tour of Rent in Chinese, which was a very fun experience. Um, and then, so all of that has led up to uh, the end of 2019. Um, so I've been pretty busy doing uh, multiple jobs, which has been truly a blessing. Um, but then the world shut down and here we are. Hi, <laughs> uh, Harris. Oh, Lord. Okay, so I graduated, left RH in 2013, went straight on to Point Park University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I was a dance major there. I was in school for about a year a year and a half, and then I uh, left. I did two and a half years uh, with uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines as a principal singer-dancer. I was traveling the world, so that was great. Uh, moved to the city in 20, oh goodness, end of 2017. Started working a little, you know, side gigs here and there, dance company auditions, the works. And then as soon as January of 2018 hit, I got an agent, booked my first Broadway show, which was the Donna Summer musical. And it all just started happening so fast after that. So it's been, it's been great. After Donna Summer, I went down to Australia and did hair for the 50th anniversary tour. So that was really fun. And then I came back here, came back to the city and then booked Frozen on Broadway and then March 12th came that faithful day and they said y'all can go home thank you <laughs> <laughs> and home we have stayed <laughs> for the year mm -hmm. yes so. yes so I guess um that leads kind of into you know Sean and I were talking a little bit uh before we went live about you know what has <clears throat> We'll do this like really depressing thing and get it out of the way and then we'll go back to all the fabulous things. Um, so what has COVID meant for you as a, as an artist? Harris, do you wanna go first? Yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> so um, like uh, Ms. Wright said, before we were chit-chatting a little bit and honestly, at first when we, when we just found out it was gonna be a nice little two week vacation, we're like, you know what, this is gonna be the, the rest that our bodies need, our voices need, our you know, mm -hmm. our, our minds need mentally and all that. And then as the months went on, you were like, oh, this is, you know, it got real serious very quickly. And we realized that we weren't coming back. And I, I had a little, my 25 year old life crisis. Uh, and I was like, well, what am I gonna do? You know, my, my outlet's gone, my creativity's gone. 
<laughs> we all got a little seasonal depression when the winter hit, but it's it's for me it's really uh, symbolized just a time of reflection, a time of uh, of gratitude, just being thankful for all I've gotten to do so far. I'm hopeful for the future that you know we'll continue to grow, learn more about the virus, learn more how to be safe, and you know as more people get vaccinated, we'll be able to open and do the theater that we love again. But for now, and I've allowed myself to take a break from creativity and just be a, what I like to call a normal, a normal human being for a little <laughs> while. You know, I'm not singing, I'm not dancing as much as I should be. So it's been, it's been hard, but we're, 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 we're getting back. We're coming back. We're coming back. Mm -hmm. Sean? Yeah, so I'm in a very similar situation to Harris where, um, the biggest thing that I've struggled with, uh, all of last year is, um, I haven't been creative whatsoever because as he said, when we, when everything shut down, no one knew how long it was going to last. We certainly did not think it was going to last this long. Um, so when they originally said two weeks, um, I was like, okay, great. Two weeks. And then another week went by and then another month went by and then another month went by. And every, like the reopen date for Broadway shows and theater kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. And probably like the second time it got pushed back was when it really like set in for me personally to be like, oh, wow. So this, it's, it's not going to be anytime soon. And that, that was really hard. And I struggled with that a lot. Um, because kind of like Harris said, there was like, it's, you, you didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't know anything. We didn't know anything about the virus. We didn't know how long this was going to last. So we were like, okay, we have to be normal people. You know what I mean? Like everything we've worked for and everything we've created for our careers was taken from us. And then, so I was standing there and I was like, what do I have left? You know, it was, re it was a really hard year um, creatively. However, I did take that time to find things that I also love, you know what I mean? Other passions, other interests. Um, so that kind of got me through the year. Um, I am moving into a new apartment in Buffalo, uh, Buffalo, New York next week. Um, so I'm going to spend some time in Buffalo, which obviously I went to college here. So I know the city very well. I have a lot of friends and I have some family here. So um, I'm trying to stay positive in this dark time with our profession. Well, hopefully, maybe we'll get to see you on Jiva's stage when things start to open up. If you're not so far sure. away, come on exactly. over. We'll bring a whole crew. Jiva, <laughs> Jiva, yes. Jiva, you yeah. know. They do such good stuff there. They do. Um, so thanks to everybody who's saying hi. Um, you can see that there's a link for questions. So students, if you're on here and you're not able to um, chat because you're on your personal device or your home, de your school device, you can um, go ahead and use that form to ask a question and we have a question from oh i know you might remember this person um kim sways good you Maybe might remember her familiar yeah. you might have worked Never with her a time her. or two for a few <laughs> minutes um she would love for you to share your fondest memory from spotlight theater uh, there's too many to count you know <laughs> there's too many to count, i know i will say one of one of my absolute favorite things to do uh, for all four years that I was involved with the musicals at our age, my favorite thing of all time was going to Stars of Tomorrow at the Auditorium Theater. It's not because, you know, we had this elitist attitude or anything, but when we performed, we always showed those other schools up and it just made me feel so mm -hmm. special. And, and, you know, I was like, uh, Miss Sargent had the vocals, Sways had the dance. We were just the tip of the top. So I just, I don't know, it, just, it always puts such a huge smile on my face. It was just a great time. Yeah, and we don't we don't even go to that anymore. No? Because of, oh, God. Because you know when they hold it right in the middle of May, and we lose so many kids from for APs and stuff, so yeah. it's just so difficult mm -hmm. to do. But I, I know, I remember how it was such a, and you know, having those those plaques lined up was always uh -huh. nice, too. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we definitely did well in the, in the Yes, yes. The Najma, yeah. tip of the top. Tip Naj. Of the yeah. That's right, Naj. <laughs> yes, love it. So, Sean, how about you? Yeah, obviously, Stars of Tomorrow was just, it was like 
the Super Bowl for us in high school, you know what I mean? Where we got to go and we got to show our stuff and show everything that we've worked so hard to achieve. Um, and it really did give us a sense of pride because there, there's no, there's nothing wrong with other schools and their programs because any program is a good program. However, we definitely did have the best faculty, which really, that's why we have so many kids from our high school go on to pursue this as a career is because we were inspired from the start. And that's what I'm like most grateful for is that we had leaders and we had, uh, I don't even want to call them teachers. They were like life professors, you know what I mean? And they really instilled in us a passion for the arts um, that we probably wouldn't have gotten if we went to another school. You know what I mean? They really fought for us to have uh, the education to continue this. And that's what I, that's my favorite thing about going to RH. And I think that's what's neat too, is so many, you know, when I kind of showed the list, our principal was like, I didn't realize so many. And I was like, I know, like they're all mm -hmm. out there doing this awesome work. And it's so exciting. And we're so grateful that you're taking time to share it back with our kids now um, so that they can understand too. Like you guys danced on the same stage as they did. And you mm -hmm. did, you know, you learned choreography with, with, you know, Mama Sways and mm -hmm. some other, some other staff has changed over. So, you know, this girl's now deciding directing is a good idea. That's um, right. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> So it's really, I love that. Um, I know we had a question. It didn't show up here for some reason. But it was kind of there when I went to look this morning. Um, but uh, somebody was asking, I think Mr. Williams, Wayne Williams, I think, um, was asking about what made you decide to look at professional? Like what what was the time when you decided like in the Broadway, this was the path where you wanted to go? Mm. <laughs> Do you want me to go first? Because I have mine. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, in middle school, obviously I was very young, uh, but I thought I had it down. I thought I knew what I wanted to do. And I was like, you know what? I'm either going to go and be a doctor or I'm going to be an architect because I love like design and interior design and houses and all of that stuff. And I had it set. I was like, that's what I'm doing. And then I did my first, uh, my first musical in high school, at the high school, my freshman year, uh, we did Beauty and the Beast and I played LeFou. And that experience completely changed my whole view on theater, on the arts, and on my future, really, uh, because um, I met so many juniors and seniors who planned on going to college for the arts. Um, in all different types of capacities. And I didn't even know that was possible. Like I didn't even think that uh, music and theater and art and all these creative uh, worlds were so was something that could be pursued. You know what I mean? So um, seeing upperclassmen going on to college and continuing to do something that I loved really was an eye opener for me. And that's when I seriously considered um, pursuing it after high school. And then the more shows I did through Spotlight Theater and the more things I got involved in um, artistically in high school, just kept it going and kept it going. And it really um, lit a fire under me. Hmm. I would say similar, similarly to Sean, I think, mm, I don't know, I've been dancing since I was two and I always knew I wanted to do that. I didn't, I mean, obviously as a kid, you don't grow up thinking, you know what, I'm gonna dance professionally. Well, I didn't at least, but I knew I always <laughs> wanted to do something with that. And I don't think it was until I left high school after doing all the musicals that I, I went on to college and as, as a dance major, I was like, you know what, I can still sing a little bit. I said, I should, I, maybe I should, maybe I should try this, you know? Uh, and the concert, the concert dance world is very hard to, to stay in. There's not a lot of money. There's not a lot of funding. And there's just, there's not a lot of like the company work that I was really interested in having left school and all that. And I, I, I kind of found, I kind of found a new home in, in the musical theater world. I, I had always been obsessed with uh, Broadway's The Lion King. I had worked with that choreographer, Garth Fagan, for many, many years. Um, and I knew that that was a show that I could aspire to be in, always wanted to be in. And then I guess, 
as time went on, I just started learning and growing um, with my theater knowledge and being like, oh, you know, I can also do this show and this show and this show. So why not just try them all? So kind of it just it, it sparked having done high school theater and moving on to college. I think it's it really sparked for me there. Yeah, and I love that idea that just because it's not maybe the the front of your four brain in like high school that you have those options. It's not like, oh, I didn't decide to start here, so I'm I'm stuck. Um, so I love that. Um, what do you think has been like your best, like in what, because you both kind of talked about how like Stars of Tomorrow was like that, like that, that's the Super Bowl. I love that <laughs> analogy. Um, but what do you think has been like the, the moment in, um, oh, I see. You know what? Forget what I'm going to say because we have a student who has a question. Hi, Jack. Thanks for asking. So this question is specifically for Sean only because it's relating to UB. Um, sure. So he's going to UB, not for MT or dance. Are there any more opportunities at UB that he can do to continue his musical journey? Jack is a fabulous singer and dancer. So yes. what, what outlets Hi, might he have? Um, yeah, that's awesome. Um, UB is a great school um, regardless. So congratulations on going there. Um, I loved it. I loved every second of it. Um, and yes, even though you aren't in uh, the MT or dance programs, you, th there's still a section, um, that they actually created when I was in school, uh, voice lessons for non-majors. Um, so you can, um, try to apply for that. Um, they don't have many slots, but, uh, I don't know if there's a huge interest or I don't think many people know about it actually, because it's through our department. Um, you would be working with our voice teachers which are some amazing voice teachers. Um, so definitely look into that. And also uh, you can still audition for the department shows. You don't have to be um, a dance major or a music theater major or an acting major to audition for the department shows. Um, typically they do cast mainly um, uh, made majors um, in the shows, but that's not to say it's impossible. Um, and just auditioning is amazing in itself because you will put yourself in front of the faculty um, and if they get to know you and you, they see you audition one or two times your chances of getting cast are so much higher so definitely look out for those opportunities because you can definitely stay involved that way love that uh hello oh, miss lynn miss lynn remember harris miss, miss lynn. lynn has a question for you she says she loves you um and how will you train oh this is i was actually going to ask you this question too you said that you're not yeah you, uh, he, she's calling you out just like she did in high school she sure is. <laughs> so uh, how are you how are you gonna get yourself back uh in slowly but surely actually i have a funny story if you'll, you'll humor me for a minute so the other day I get an email from my agent about this movie that's gonna be starting production soon. So she told me to you know, audition and send in clips and they had all these combinations I had to learn and uh, record on Zoom and send off to their people. So I'm outside, cause there's no space to dance in my house, but I'm outside in the garage or on the, in the driveway on uneven pavement, trying to dance, trying to kick my face. And I had to stop for a second and like catch my breath. I was like, oh, you are out of shape. <laughs> I said, baby, this is not going to work. You're not as spry as you used to be. But <laughs> at the know, age, the uh, the ancient age of 25 years old. At the old. ancient age, yes, of 25, 26 <laughs> years old, going on 87. Okay. Uh, but I've I've slowly gotten back into my normal diet, um, work, uh, getting up and working out, going for long walks with my dogs, long runs with my dogs when I am in the mood to run. Rarely. Uh, <laughs> Only when being chased, and then Only it depends. When being chased, it depends exactly. on who's doing the chasing. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> but it'll it'll slowly start to come back. I've been getting back into my stretching routines every night. So what well, you know, we didn't gain. We gained the COVID nineteen, but it, it went away quickly. It went away quickly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, and how about you, Sean? Have you been um, dancing and doing things regularly? I have not. Um, the only thing that I've been keeping active with is I've been working out a lot and I think last year I worked out more than I ever have um, just because I knew that, that 
also it was like an emotional thing for me to kind of like just get into a workout routine and work out every day and just like release everything that I have been feeling. Um, but I haven't really been dancing a lot. Um, I, <laughs> I did film a couple callback videos for a couple other tours. This was back a year ago in March um, when there was still that hope that shows could uh, go out in the fall of 2020. Um, but that's like the last time I actually danced and it's been tough, but you know what? I'm staying active, which is good. And that's something that I know um, Sway's always kind of pointed out and that we've heard from last year, um, Tyler Hardwick came in and did some work with kids. And he, he talked about that, that working out is really significant for that you have, that it's not just dance classes and vocal lessons, mm -hmm. that you do have to really build your strength and stamina because you need to present, you know, strength mm -hmm. on the stage. Mm -hmm. So I think that's good for our, um, our, our students to hear as well. Um, so Mr. Bohr, hi, hi, Mr. Bohr. Um, he, his <laughs> member, little Charlie, little Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, looking I at sure MT do. schools next year. Oh. Yeah, is this is so our little our little sugar cube is was, a sugar he cube was, no yes, more. Yes. Around the music department during musical season. Always. Well, now he's, he's doing just, his own musicals. Wow. So what did he was the sugar what did, cube was, in Beauty and the Beast? He was. Yeah, the little sugar cube. Um, so, <laughs> what advice would you give him now? What things should he look for to see if he'd be a good fit for the program? So at school. Oh. Um, I think if you're touring just going to say just go to UB because that's the best school. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, but also if you're if you're touring a, a few different schools, um, really walk around the campus and really uh, pay attention in the tours, especially if um, I don't know if they still do this, but like if the tour guides bring you into classes and you can kind of see how the classes are run, really take note of what's going on in the classroom and if that's something that kind of like sparks joy or piques your interest, um, you, you want to find somewhere that you will be comfortable in, um, but also somewhere that's going to push you. So um, take a look at the current students there, take a look at the faculty, um, take a look at the facility, um, and just, like I said, walk around the campus and see if, if this is somewhere where you can actually picture yourself being happy. Um, because there's nothing worse. I hear all these stories about people who hated their college experience. Um, and that that's like the biggest motivation killer is to be somewhere where you're unhappy. Um, so really find somewhere that feels like a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. I was so bouncing off of that. I would say at least what, something that was important to me when I was in the looking for school, looking for program process was diversity. I would walk mm. into the classes or like, you know, follow the tour guide into the classes and be like, how many of me do I see in this room? Cause I don't want to be another number. Um, yep. And I want, I wanted, I wanted to be surrounded by different people from all walks of life, because not only are you going to learn and grow from your, mm -hmm. from the faculty, but you're also going to learn and grow from the other students yes. and just yes. their way of life, their, their experiences, uh, their culture, their religion, their music, their dance styles, their vocal styles, what have you. So diversity was a real important thing for me when choosing schools. Yeah, I love that because, you know, that's something, you know, that's a point of pride for RH that we have yeah. such a diverse community mm -hmm. and being able to, can, you know, and I look at my growing up, I mean, I grew up in this teeny tiny school in the Finger Lakes and teaching here has been one of the, that's one of my favorite parts about being here is all those things you just listed, learning new cultures, different things, and knowing that I'm learning just as much as hopefully I'm teaching. So I love that, um, that idea of just, you know, surround yourself with people that are different and you can grow from that. I love that so much. Um, <clears throat> what would you guys say? Um, so what I was going to ask before, um, all these questions rudely interrupted me. <laughs> Much more interesting is what do you think? Is, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's like one of the like the pinnacle moments for you as a performer out in the world. <laughs> Silence. Okay. I don't mind. John, do you mind if I jump in? Go for it. Uh, pinnacle pro for me, most exciting moment was doing hair at the Sydney Opera House. 
that was we did mm-hmm. two and a half weeks of shows at the city opera house and we sold out every single night that was the largest space i have ever performed and the largest amount of people i've ever performed for and i had a i had a principal role in that show so i was on stage most of the time and just feeling the energy getting reactions off of you know vocals dancing laughs humorous moments all that that was incredible and that really cemented in me that i'm i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing you know everyone maybe you watched that movie uh the new pixar movie soul and you know it talks about everyone has a purpose yes everyone has a purpose you can change that purpose nothing is set in stone but that i really found my purpose doing that show at that time and it happened right before all this covid madness and i think it, it was it was perfect it was a perfect timing for all that wonderful how about you sean so my moment um was definitely when i was doing the rent tour um we so we get the tour schedule ahead of time um and i saw that we were coming to buffalo um which the theater here shays is just gorgeous it's huge wow. it's so beautiful um and we we're here for a week um but on the rent tour i was a swing and i understudied mark um so for me performances weren't guaranteed um so it was that was the hardest part of the tour was um i couldn't tell people like oh i'm going to be in this come buy your tickets to see me perform because it was never guaranteed um however um the guy who played mark was one of my best friends on the tour and we kind of planned a little something something for when we were in (laughs) buffalo um so he ended up calling out on the friday night show for me so i could go on he was sick he was sick um (laughs) and we kind of talked about this a couple months in advance um but that also was a tricky thing is that there's two understudies for every role so even that even so it was still not guaranteed that i would go on so i didn't i didn't really tell anyone except my family that hey if you're going to see the show in Buffalo, buy your tickets for this night just in case. You know what I mean? Um, but then I got the call that I would be going on that night. So then I blasted it to the world that I was going on <laughs> as Mark Cohen at Shays. And I had so many people drop everything that they were doing that night and come see the show. I had some of my best friends win the lottery. So they were front row at Shays uh-huh. seeing me perform as Mark Cohen. And just taking that final bow and looking out into the audience and seeing my best friends in the front row, knowing that I had like 40 plus people there for me just to see me perform was like the greatest feeling in the world. Yeah, that's incredible. That brings you back to those because it's always guaranteed. Like when you're doing a small show and you've got, Mm -hmm. you, you know. So I love that. That's awesome. I I remember you posting that and being like, it happened. (laughs) And I was like, yeah. why couldn't I? Get I know, there? so far away. I, I know. know. I, make it. I and mean, it, it was one of those things that I couldn't really advertise it ahead of time. You know what I mean? Right. Especially because if it, we wouldn't have gotten really so much in trouble by our company, but it is definitely frowned upon to like plan that the, the person hired for the role is going to call out so the understudy can go on. You know what I mean? It's right. definitely frowned upon. Um, so I couldn't really advertise it to the world that. Right. Oh, come see the show on Friday uh, in Buffalo <laughs> two months from now because I'm going to be going on. You know what I mean? <laughs> I may or may not be. Mm-hmm. So right. that actually, and that actually brings up to the idea of like a swing. I'm not sure if um, a lot of students know what a swing is and the role of a swing. So could you talk about that? A little? Harris, have you been a swing too? I, yes, a little bit. Okay. Bit. Yeah. All right. So, Sean, if you want to kind of explain what that means for an actor or sure. performer, and then Harris, you can share your experience with that as well. Yeah. So, in um, professional productions, um, especially long running productions, um, it's really good to have understudies and swings just in case people get sick or they can't perform. Um, because with long running shows, it's kind of a given that you're gonna miss a show here or there due to whatever reason. So swings are, 
people who kind of understudy the entire ensemble. So um, if any of the ensemble people have to go on for their understudy track or just can't do the show, the swings fit into their track. So no one is missing from the stage. Everyone's traffic patterns are the same. So swings don't perform every night. Uh, they're not guaranteed to perform. Sometimes you go to the theater and you sit backstage for two and a half hours, um, but you have to know every single ensemble track. Um, so you're basically an understudy for like eight or nine people. Um, and it's really hard. It's um, definitely, I think one of the hardest jobs in any show is to swing, um, but it is also one of the most uh, fulfilling uh, jobs because just knowing that at any given moment you can you can go into the show like there have been times where I've gone into the show mid show like someone gets hurt during the show and they're out and you have five minutes to get ready and you have to go on can't even review anything um, you just get thrown into the show so you're so I think swings are superheroes but <laughs> yeah it's I can't even oh, yeah. and then um, so what's a tr you said track what's a track a track is basically just one person's um, show, one person's stage pattern um, from beginning to end um, where like they're staging on on the stage, um, kind of who they go in between during this dance number, their choreography. It's uh, specific to one person um, and we call that a track um, because it's kind of like a train track where it's set um, and you just have to follow that track um in order to do their job yeah and i think that's so crazy to think about that so there are people who know like you said eight or nine mm -hmm. paths for the entire show and that and now does that include that you learn different vocal parts i mean obviously a lead understudy but even ensemble you learn different vocal parts oh yes oh yes and they will call you out if you sing the wrong harmony because <laughs> with shows of that caliber it is like very balanced. Um, it's set that way for a specific reason. If you have three guys on this note and three guys on this note, um, it's going to be out of balance if you go into a track and you don't sing this note. You know what I mean? So, um, and they're always listening. <laughs> <laughs> always. <laughs> so, Harris, how about you? What experience do you have with that? Uh, so, in Donna Summer, I called the, the Donna Summer musical, I called that show my promenade show. Cause I wasn't, I didn't have many lines, but what I did was cross. I crossed every, every inch of that stage, at least 12 <laughs> or 13 different times during the show. But my position in that show, because there was only five men, I was the male swing. So I covered all five men in the company. And I also, when women were out of the company, we did split shows or split tracks. So it was also my job to do the women's crosses as a swing for them as well. So I would do my crosses and then change into completely new costumes and do their crosses as well, just to have an extra body in the space where someone was needed to like pick up a coat, pick up a prop, pick up a bag, something yeah. like that. So where I had my own track every night, if, so, if another male or even a female was out, I would swing and do their crosses as well. So I was, I was always busy. Like Sean said, they're the most important people in the show because they know they have to know everything and be on point at any, at any time. You know, swings, mm -hmm. it's hard for a swing to get a sick day, you know, and mm -hmm. when they're on, a good swing is always on. They're, they're well, so exciting to watch. Yeah, so that's great to look that when, you know, I didn't understand that fully. I always kind of looked at it and was like, what's that? And I can honestly, if I'm, I'm going to show my ineptitude now is when I first started noticing it in programs and this was, a, you know, like 10 years ago, I was like, is that a technical thing? Like they're doing like something in the back, like with, I didn't understand. So just hearing all about that is really fascinating and, and just understanding the breadth of that. Um, I know that another teacher um, actually said this to me last week uh, to ask people, um, but I love this idea of like, have you ever had a starstruck moment? You know, have you ever met someone that's just kind of made you go, you know, and, and it doesn't need to be some big, but just a moment when, you, you know, because we don't always know the names, you know, of people who are prominent in the community as much just because mm -hmm. they're maybe not, you know, they're maybe not the, um, the faces of 
you know, the faces of the the production, as it were. So what what do you think? What are the like a starstruck moment you might have had? I'm just gonna grab my water real quick. Uh for at least for me, my my starstruck moment was the actual lead of the show. Her name is Casey Levy. Uh, and she mm -hmm. was the Elsa in Frozen. And my first night in the show, where during the backstage choreo, we all come up, the ensemble comes up to sing background oohs and ahs during Let It Go. And I had no idea that Casey, Casey would be coming right behind me to go down the middle, the middle staircase to sing Let It Go and all that, yeah. you know, wonderfulness. So I'm sitting back there doing my oohs and ahs and here she comes right next to me, belting her face off. And I was like, oh, oh this, is, this is my job now? Oh, that's really, really cool. And she was just <laughs> wailing. And it was, first of all, she's amazing, an amazing talent. So that was my starstruck moment. I was like, okay, well, this is great. This is going to be cool. I like see, I like hearing this eight shows a week, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Yeah, for me, I think my biggest like starstruck moment um, was right before the pandemic hit. Uh, one of the, the last thing, I did um, was I filmed a short little scene for um, Tick Tick Boom, which is coming out on Netflix later this year. Um, I, was, I, I, love was, it. I know I was cast <laughs> as like a featured dancer. So um, this was the first time I've ever been on like a movie set um, filming like a, a big movie. Um, and I actually got to meet and hang out with uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda. Uh, because he he's the director of the movie, um, so I, I have a picture with him and everything, um, and I got to spend like twelve hours with him, which was really cool. And he is just like the most down to earth human, um, and I I knew ahead of time that he was going to be there, um, but you know it's Lin Manuel Miranda, so I was like, oh my god. Um, and then I got there, and he he was like so chill. He did not have this attitude about him at all. He was just like, he came up to us and was like, hey guys, how's it going? Like, thank you so much for being a part of this movie. And like, he was just so nice. And that was like a moment where I was like, that's Lin-Manuel Miranda. <laughs> so it was, <laughs> um, it was amazing. Yeah, that's so cool. I love that. Um, just, I can't even imagine, you know, you think about that. Although you guys are making me feel starstruck all the time. I'm like, I know you when you were this big and you were little and it makes me so proud. Um, so what do you think, um, <clears throat> what do you think is the plan for next? I mean, have you heard anything? I, I keep asking, you know, have you heard any, any rumblings, any projects, any maybe, um, I know Mark last week said he felt like there's some light. He can see the light. Have you guys heard anything about when we might expect to enjoy a show again? Sean, you want to hit it? Sure. <laughs> um, so I'm. It, there definitely is a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, theater will come back. Um, and I know they're talking about shows opening in the fall of this year. Um, I don't know, Harris will probably be able to talk about the Broadway shows a little bit more, but I know for touring shows at least, um, I see that they're posting like audition notices and um, they're really expecting shows to be up and running uh, by the end of this year, which is a really, really good thing. Um, but to kind of go off of that, um, we were talking about this a little bit before we went live, but one of the, hardest things that I've had to kind of like accept is uh, being okay with the fact that I don't know what's going to be next for me. Um, especially in New York City, it's it's so fast paced that everyone is like, okay, what am I doing next? What am I doing next? Um, but this time that we've had to reflect has just taught me that, you know, it's okay not to know what's coming next. Uh, because I, I have so much time. I have so much time for the rest of my career that I'm just gonna take the time to live in the now. Um, so I personally don't have anything lined up, um, but I'm learning that that is okay. And I'm okay with that because I have time for to be a regular human, like Harris said. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I can also bounce off that too. I, Frozen closed. Frozen was the first Broadway show to mm -hmm. actually announce that it wasn't going to return after the pandemic. So I don't, I'm like Sean, I don't have a job to go back to, which is unfortunate, but 
like Sean said, you know, you, 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 you learn to be okay with not knowing what's going to be ahead in the future, you know? So all, all I can do right now is start to get the body back together, get the voce back together, you know, stop being a crazy 20 year old, you know, in these <laughs> streets doing whatever I want, you know, <laughs> I got, you gotta, get, you gotta take, you gotta start taking things seriously again. But yeah, there are definitely some, um, rumblings of theater starting up again i know i've heard a couple of broadway shows are going to be getting into rehearsals again soon <coughs> the companies back together which is a wonderful sign and i've seen some mm -hmm. audition notices up as well so there's yeah like you said there's a light at the end of the tunnel there's a light yeah, I, that that i'm sure everybody's excited to hear that i know i am my uh my subscription renewal at the auditorium theater is just waiting to be filled once <laughs> once it's back up. Um, what, where do you, like, I, I know that, you know, both of you have said, you're both so young and you are, you have so much of your career ahead of you. What, what if, is there something else you want to do in theater other than perform? I know, Sean, you mentioned you choreographed. Um, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. the, but like, what else, what, what might be after this when you feel like maybe performing isn't, isn't for you anymore not that you'll ever not perform but what do you think yeah um i so i did i choreographed um the uh national tour of or the the chinese national tour of rent um which was a very very interesting experience um especially because the entire show was in mandarin so i had to work through translators to teach my choreography to the cast um, so I have had a little experience choreographing, which um, was great, but I don't know if that is something that I want to actively pursue. Um, I, I tried it and that was great and I had a, a blast doing it, but I think uh, eventually I would like to try to get more into directing uh, because I think my brain kind of works more um, in that sense where it's not so much creating movement, but um, I could see like big, bigger picture of a show and kind of direct it in that way. So that is something that I would definitely love to uh, get into. And I think, especially being in Buffalo, um, I could definitely get involved, at least start to get involved um, here in this community. Nice. What do you think, Harris? I have actually, been bouncing back and forth on this idea for a couple of months. Either move into the artistic direction of a company, of a theater company, mm -hmm. or casting. Mm. Mm. I have found during this time of everyone just being in front of screens 24 seven, I have found the most talented singers, dancers, People from all over the world on Instagram, on TikTok, on Clubhouse, people from all over the world that I have never heard of, never seen, and they're just everywhere. And I'm and my brain is going a million miles a minute, just being like, you need to be in this. You should be in this show. Mm -hmm. I could put a cast together. And I just I want to share other people's gifts with the world. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's where I'm thinking when I when I want to settle down and slow down a bit i might transition to that into that weird world a little bit casting maybe agent or maybe no agent maybe <laughs> agent yeah uh, and yeah. so that actually is a follow-up how how important do you think it is to, to secure an agent if you want to act and be uh, in shows you know what i would say before you secure an agent secure yourself hmm. know what who you are know your brand know what you bring to the table and do it well and know what you you know know what your 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 flaws are know what you need to work on and always continue that the work will always be there the agents will always be there but you want agents coming to you you know and the way you do that is to be confident in who you are so that that that's what i would say first but they do help they do help. <laughs> they do help yeah they, i they, definitely they do some of that work for you yeah I definitely agree with what Harris is saying because um, back in college, one of the big things was like, oh, I, ha I have to get an agent. I have to get an agent. And um, I feel like a lot of people go into like agent uh, meetings or agent auditions with this idea that 
they they're trying to be what the agent wants um and that is just not benefiting anyone because um if let's say you're trying to be what the agent is is looking for and then you get that you get that agent you're both kind of like misrepresented you know what i mean uh, because you're not being true to yourself and the agent is submitting you for things that you're probably not right for um so it's just kind of a a, a big uh, miscommunication so like Harris said, you have to be secure in who you are. Um, because if you know what you want and you know the type of work that you want to do, um, the agent does that work for you. Like the agent mm. submits you. Um, and if you say like, I want to be in this show, uh, please get me an appointment for this track because I know I could kill that. Um, like that's what their job is. You know what I mean? So as long as you are secure in yourself, the work will come. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a great message for anybody to, you know, be true and stay true to what's what's your best fit. Don't yeah. change your who you are and how you perform for mm-hmm. to fit into something that somebody else thinks you're meant for. Um, Cameron has a question for you. What's your favorite musical uh, you've performed in? So she asked Broadway, but I think any musical. What, what's your uh, favorite musical that you've ever performed in? Oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Honestly, I think Spotlight so Theater Zavita. <laughs> you were so good in that. That was my favorite. That was the first time I had done a lead role and sung the entire show through. And then I was like, okay, I got some chops. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was in high school. I didn't know anything, but I still, I was like, I'm super proud of myself. I was super proud of myself and like, and just getting through that, you know? So, so for everybody was- watching who wasn't here for that, he was Che in, in Avita. Yeah. So, so he was, was he was my favorite. Yeah, that, and that's a crazy show because that's yeah. I mean, Che is pretty much on stage. Is <laughs> it a bigger time. is it a bigger track than Evita? Mm. It's pretty close. They're, they're pretty close. It's big. They're pretty close. I mean, look, yeah. I didn't have to go all the way up there every five minutes, so I wasn't mad at that. But it was still it was still a, a difficult track to do, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And you Stage were dancing. Time, though. I mean, you were dancing. Okay, and moving and moving. <laughs> Wade had you moving. Okay, yes. always. <laughs> well, and that's a that's a big part of it. But that I mean, he's the narrator of the story. Mm-hmm. So part of it, but not part of it, which is it's such it, a which is which is why it's such a fascinating role that you're yeah. you're outside of the story, but you're also a part of it. Just a big old dancing shadow, always there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, how about you? Uh, my favorite show that I've been a part of was definitely the national tour of Cinderella, um, because this was my first time doing a Broadway national tour. We did the Broadway show, um, and we took it on tour. And the the amount of money that they put into that show was wild. Um, it was like the most magical production I've ever been a part of, and just like that's what what I loved most about it was that it was so it was such a spectacle show and it every audience that came left with a huge smile on their face um just because there are so many magical moments in that show and that's really what I love um yes I love like the thought provo- provoking theater and stuff like that but sometimes I I'm a sucker for a good spectacle with a lot of magic and <laughs> It's just so impressive. You know what I mean? Like big wow moments, like when Cinderella's dress changes and uh, the fairy godmother transforms and just all of that. I, I, I loved watching it every single night and I never got bored of it. So that's what I, I that's my favorite show. Yeah, I agree with you 100% because the other side too is then being able to understand how it happens. You know, when you're oh, an audience absolutely. member, it is the magic, but then to be able to stand back and say like, how, how did that happen? You know, I think yeah. that's just a brilliant thing to be able to know that and not just you. And I know I can attest to that personally because my mother-in-law and niece saw you in um, Utica oh, on that tour. Oh. Now, they saw fame too when you were in fame. 
And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and, they, and she was like, do you want my ticket? And I was like, it's on a Wednesday or something. I can't drive to Utica, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. they both, they love those. And my, my niece was just so impressed. I was like, yeah, I know him. <laughs> she was like, oh, oh good. <laughs> so cute. So she loved those shows. Um, I'm trying to think what else I said I was going to ask you guys. If anybody has any questions, we're kind of rounding out here. We've only got about, um, you know, seven or eight more minutes. So if anybody out there watching has questions, please ask them. Um, um, one thing that you did, one thing that you did uh, put in the email that I would love to share is like a funny story. Oh, yes, um, please. Oh. Yes, funny stories. <laughs> so on Cinderella, um, this was my first time swinging. Um, so I already had like a million things to think about. But so I was do I was uh, performing as the fox for an extended period because um, one of the the guy who plays the fox he got injured and had to leave the tour for a little bit. So I replaced him. Um, but on tour, you go to so many different cities. So they hire a local crew um, at every venue that you go to to help out. Yes, we have our small crew that travels with us. Um, but it takes a million people to put on a show of that caliber and that size. So they hire local crew at every venue that we go to. And I don't remember what city we were in, but I had this sweet, sweet woman. She was so nice and so sweet, but she was doing uh, the wigs for the show and she did not pin mine in well enough. And <laughs> the Fox, the track, the Fox track is uh, a tumble track. So there's lots of flips and leaps and turns and spins and somersaults and everything. And the act two opener is, it's called the pursuit, which is the big dance number where they're like chasing Cinderella, the fox and the raccoon through the, the forest. So there's lots of high intensity choreo, choreo and lots of flips and stuff. And there's this one flip, I did like an assisted backflip with two other cast members. And then I do a back somersault out of it and pop up. And everything is going fine. And when I pop up, I just see the other cast members, their eyes were like, <gasps> huge and i look down and my wig is in my hands <laughs> and i truly like time froze and i was just like <gasps> and i just like let out this big exhale but we had to continue you know what i mean because it's like a very high intense chore choreographed number so i'm running around the stage with this wig in my hands and it is like a long wig and it's just balled up in my like a a big mess of hair in my hands. I'm running around with a bald, a bald cap on because that's what I had on under it. So I am, I hear the audience like laughing, like the first few rows were laughing. Everyone on stage was laughing. I didn't know what to do. So when I finally got close enough to the wings, I threw it off stage and finished the number. But I must have looked like a crazy person, a crazy bald fox running across the stage with a handful of hair. <laughs> oh, no. So oh, that sorry. was Tragis. my funniest moment. <laughs> Tragis says she's having flashbacks to Beauty and the Beast. I don't know what that means. Oh, what happened? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. Mrs. Diana says, got to love a, go a great costume mishap. So nice to see you guys. I was Aww. just about to say, Mrs. Diana knows I have ripped my pants in every show I've been in. <laughs> every single one from West Side Story at the high school to Frozen. I have ripped my pants in every single show. Uh, down the summer, ripped my pants during Hot Stuff, the, one of the finale, the first part of the finale number at the end of the number we turned around from the audience and like strutted very very nice and classy and flashy back up stage just underwear out to the audience could see literally flashy <laughs> literally, literally flashy, flashy. <laughs> ripped my pants on national tv at uh, on the tony awards ripped my pants at the macy's thanksgiving day parade naturally my pants twice in the same show during frozen Oh, no. oh my goodness. It's just, it just, it, they just don't want to stay on me. They just don't. And it's really, it's really embarrassing, but it's become part of my brand. I just ripped, I ripped all my pants. If you need a good rip, pants rip in time, Look, Paris is your guy. I'm your guy. There you go. Traj says that means you're working hard. Okay, truly. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and Mrs. Diana says you still have your signature moves. So, hey. 
That's the right. holier the holier the pants, the holier the soul. That's right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> so funny. So, so obviously, Harris, you've had some pants mishaps along the way. So that's good to know. Mm -hmm. oh my um, so I, I don't know if there's anything else. We've got just a couple minutes left. If there's any kind of last parting words, unless we see a question from anyone. Thanks, everyone, for jumping on and uh, sharing. Oh, Nate Barnett losing his torch. I don't remember that. Oh, yes. He lost his, <laughs> his hands, like, came off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see Lumiere, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nate will be mm -hmm. Nate and Nick. Nate and Nick are going to be joining us, I think, in two weeks um, oh, nice. to do something similar. So we are uh, excited to talk to them too. Um, so, is there any kind of last last nuggets of wisdom or kernels? Oh, Traj had to crawl in the pit <laughs> to get it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Can I, ask, can I ask you a question? Sure. What? What visions, what plans do you have for Spotlight Theater in the future? Mm -hmm. Oh, for me, geez Louise, you want to put me on the spot or what? <laughs> yes. um, so, you know, it's been this year, just like you guys, it's been, um, <clears throat> it's been a year, you know, last year we were doing Birdie, Bye Bye Birdie, and we found out four hours before downbeat of the opening night that we were canceled. Oh, no. So, oh. you know. Luckily, because our principal and our and um, our director were just so awesome, it was like we got in somebody to record it. And I spent then the following like six and a half months trying to get rights to actually show it because we didn't purchase the video oh, right. Yeah. So we were asking for dispensation. Luckily, six and a half months later, um, the week of Thanksgiving, we were able to show that. So, but oh, we couldn't gosh. do a fall play this year. We're currently actually, um, we just cast and we're doing a review of sorts. So I'm directing some drama stuff. We're doing a monologue, a one act monologue show, as well as some smaller scenes. Um, Swayze is doing some big production numbers uh, with dance cool. and singing. You know, we're oh, making, yeah, we're making, you know, we're looking at masking, what we're going to get for masks. But because of the the safety plan and the, how we're going to stage it, kids who are speaking like a monologue, their featured moments, they will be able to remove their masks because they'll be far enough away that it's safe. Um, so we're really excited for that. But I think next year is just going to be kind of a, a building year. You know, mm -hmm. enrollment right now for the arts is struggling because we just kids mm -hmm. can't perform, can't be an ensemble. So my vision and my goal is just to get everybody back and just um, and also to really kind of bond together with our junior high counterparts, you know, um, and this was something that, you know, Dr. Schaefer and I have kind of been talking about and working on since August. You know, I was like, I just I have this idea. It's like we've got all these kids I, and it's so hard. I can't stop thinking of you kids. You're adults, fully grown, but I, you're still kids. You know, you're still my little kids. Um, but just this idea of you're not working, the kids need art, the kids here need art, so can we make this happen? And the district mm -hmm. has been so awesome and supportive, you know, helping us find funding and just, it's been, you know, I'm hoping that that's how we're keeping it going so that people, you know, that the kids remember it's here and it's where you can find your joy and your peace. And that's kind of our goal. It's just, this is just the joy of theater and let's get back together and mm. celebrate. But our, you know, Mrs. Diana is just, she's always got these great insights, you know, about, you know, we're here to celebrate what our bodies are capable of doing, what we can share of ourselves through the arts and through bringing someone's music and script to life and the dance and all of it. So I think it's, just, I hope it's going to be just a really positive experience. We have so many featured opportunities, you know, in a show, you might have four leads. Mm -hmm. um, but this we have, you know, we have seven small vocal ensembles where, you know, 14, I think roughly 14 students are going to get their moment to sing and have a solo. Oh, There's great. solos in the big production numbers. And, you know, it was really nice. And we had actually kids come in and audition. And based on what they did, we're like, yeah, we're doing that song because it was so brilliant. Um, so it's really great. helping. I hope it's helping our students find their brand, you know, <laughs> that not every show has a part that's perfect for you, but this show has something that's perfect for you. Mm -hmm. And oh, so that's, that's great. So that's beautiful. That's I'm beautiful. really, that so that's beautiful. been kind of our push and just let's, let's get everybody as featured as they can be. And I'm so thrilled all of the 
all of the students who are a part of it. Jot, yes, joy of theater. That's our mm -hmm. <laughs> hashtag jot. <laughs> um, and they might think we're all crazy, but I don't care because the craze is what yeah. hopefully they'll love us for it in the end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> so I'm just saying, you know, actually today I have my first rehearsal. Oh, great. And I, That's I so cannot exciting. wait. I cannot yeah. wait to work with with them today. So I'm I'm thrilled. Oh great! Nice. Well, thank yeah, you so, for keeping theater yeah. alive. Um, you know, it's it's where it's where I find my peace too, and all, all the you. yeah, and all the crazy. That's it's amazing. The same for all of us, is yeah. Being, yeah, being creative, having theater, having the arts is that it's something that bonds a lot of us together. You know. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I am. Oh, she's recreating the Superman, the Superman synchro. synchro dance. Do you guys remember that the air? I don't know. Were you guys in that? There was a, there were one, and we did, um, when it was when uh, Nice was still teaching here, she did, we did a night of one acts. <clears throat> I don't know if. I don't know. I don't know. Kim, that. I don't know. I think there, I think that was before them because yeah, Sean's first show dance. was with Pincelli. His first music, your first well, musical was with, was with Pincelli. Yeah. Yeah. So I did I, um, Romeo and Juliet with, uh, Miss Anise. Oh, that's right. With 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 Trish, yeah. I have a picture of you guys still <laughs> that I always keep have on my wall. There they are. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, when we when we saw the Facebook post and we saw our little our baby photos. Oh like, man, <laughs> they're brilliant. They're brilliant. I forgot Sean all that curly hair. Yes. Well, and you know what I, I laugh know. about too is I think about Beauty and the Beast, and you were cast as Lafu, and then you got measured. And all of that, uh, and then you grew like three inches or something, and none oh, of your yeah. pants fit. Poor yeah, Mrs. I was, Diana. I was like a little chubby kid the start of my freshman year, and then by the time we performed, I was like tall and lanky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, things change. It's so it's funny. So... I know. <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you guys so yeah. much for joining me. Thanks everybody who hopped on to watch. Um, take a look at the website. Everybody's watching. You can see um, handles to follow these guys, see what they're up to when things get going back up, see what they're doing on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I know, Sean, you're on Twitter. Harris, is yours? do you do Twitter too? I know you're a big Instagram. I don't, I don't tweet. No, I don't tweet. Do Insta. I'm, on, I'm on the Instagram. Yeah. You're on the Insta. All right. Well, thanks so much guys for joining me and uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Thank you.